welcome to this case study webinar where we'll dive a little bit deeper into one of our case studies. My name is Mike Peterson. I'm partner account manager for the UK market here at Umbraco. And today I'll be joined by accountancy firm Baker Tilly International and their partner Clerkswell to show us that they have developed a new international website unifying over 50 of the individual member firms and to tell us a little bit about their takeaways from this project and hopefully we can inspire you on your next project. Um, I have Adam and uh, I have Stella with me. Are you there? Yes. I'm here. Welcome. I'll hand it over to you then. Okay. Thank you very much. So um, an introduction to us. I'm Stella and I'm an account manager here at Clarkswell. So who are we? Uh, Clarkswell is an award-winning digital agency based in London. We do a range of digital work. Uh, we offer hosting services, digital workplaces, and website development. And we've been in this business for over 20 years now. We're both an Umbraco Gold Partner and a Microsoft Gold Partner, offering both internal communications and web services to resolve organizational challenges. And we have a great team of people who are really, truly technical experts, and they really understand the technology. So we are able to tailor our work to our clients' requirements. Uh, so we are really excited to delve into more details about one of our website development projects with one of our very, very valued partners today, who are Baker Tilly International. Uh, so we worked with them to unify their global brand under a single, scalable and flexible CMS with Umbraco. And we will be talking about what we did and what made this project such a success. Such a success. And um, I'll hand over to Adam now from Baker Tilly International to introduce himself. Great. Thanks, Stella. Uh, thanks for having me here today. It's lovely to talk about this project and everything we've been able to do over the last few years. Um, so as uh, Michael Stella said, I'm Adam Granger, the CIO at Baker Tilly International. Um, as it says up on the, the slide you'll be seeing, um, <laughs> Baker Tilly International um, is a network of advisory uh, and consulting firms, particularly in orbit tax, corporate finance, legal, uh, around 37,000 people all across um, the globe, over 120 firms, 148 territories. Um, and really over about three years ago, uh, just over three years ago now, uh, we unified under the, the Baker Tilly brand, the Baker Tilly uh, trademark. We've been working towards that for some time. Um, and so now we are that that consistent Baker Tilly brand, as well as the offering that we have across the, the world. And we'll tell you a bit more about what that meant for the website and the like shortly. So Stella, back to you. Thank you very much, Adam. So just to go through the agenda of what we'll be talking about today. Um, firstly, we'll be talking about what the project with Baker Tilly International was and what it entailed and the things and challenges we needed to consider before we started the project. Then we'll be talking about the key elements and the focus areas of the solution that we developed together. Then we'll be moving on to the wins from the project and what went well. And then we'll look at things we think we could have done differently and future perspectives going forward. Over to you, Adam. Great, thanks, Stella. So um, I'll get, get straight into these considerations that we had um, pre-project. And actually the last one there is probably where I'll start is that we had a very tight deadline with this. Uh, pulling everything together. We did have a, a great project in terms of the, the branding, um, but as ever, there's always going to be somewhat of a squeeze with when things are finally decided and then when we're about to, to go live. Um, and if we had five years, we would have taken five years. If you have five days or you have five months, then that's what you work towards. We had really, uh, in, in, in reality, around four months to pull everything together. And what was key for us is, as I mentioned earlier, is we're a network of firms under that Paper Tilly brand. Um, this was not just about our single global website that represents the network. Um, this was arguably more about the websites for all of the different member firms. Um, we have a wide range of firms, small, large, across obviously very different countries with different levels of expertise, particularly when it comes to um, the marketing side and, and, and specifically websites and the like. And that means that previously we've been looking to how could we help member firms um, with their websites. Um, it was a little bit easier pre this project because there were some inconsistencies and therefore firms being slightly different was possibly okay. That was not okay three years ago when we were about to launch a global brand 
if someone was to flip on a website from a certain country around the world and it still had the old branding. We needed to make sure that those firms that maybe didn't have the skills and the expertise and the time had a solution. So we were looking for something that we could roll out to not just our own website, but probably 50, 60, 70 other member firms who, who lacked their skills in here. Um, the solution that we we picked was Umbreco, and that was through our partner Clerkswell. Um, the two things were going hand in hand in terms of what CMS we were going to pick and what agency we were going to use. Um, the the two came together. Obviously, well, Clerkswell came together and worked with Umbreco for some time, and that provided us with the opportunity to um, bring the brand, uh, bring the firms under a consistent brand, a consistent platform that we could um, we could influence separately. I don't like to say control, particularly because that's not what we do as a, as a network of independent firms, but there is a base layer of expectations that we did have to make sure was consistent. And the Embraco solution enabled us to do that. It enabled us to create what we've got, what we call a build and host solution. So we build and host websites for each of our firms and we can make sure that, that there is that consistency um, also saving them time and money and in some case effort. Um, we also needed to make sure we had a global directory to make sure everything was consistent there. One of the most important things of our global website, particularly at the time, was people being able to find our firms and the right people. Um, previously, that was something that, again, where we relied quite heavily on information coming from different firms and different sources. This was all about unifying that. So we had one consistent platform um, for those, those bits of information. And I'll talk a little bit about that later because that's gradually been upgraded um, across the years. And there's further plans to do more with that one as well that will link into other things that means that we're, we're, we're linking the CMS with other platforms and, and um, databases and the like um, that we that we use. Um, another thing that I'd like to go into is obviously with the firms across all those different countries is language capabilities was a massive thing. That was something that clearly was was provided with um, Umbraco for us and was easy to do and has been something obviously very popular uh, with the firms and it's absolutely essential to us to be able to um, be able to, uh, to, to to provide that. And then Probably finally linking into that as of that obviously means that the member firms themselves are able to look after these sites, add things, change things, um, particularly when it comes to their native language. And that's what this solution could do as well, even though that we're there to, to help to build and to make things um, to, to, to maintain things, the, the firms themselves have their own you know, firm level admin to run the website as if it's, well, it is their own. It's exactly their own. Um, and we can step in where we need to and make sure we provide the consistent areas as well. So all in all, they were some of the, the key things that we needed to do. And the platform and clerks will gave us that ability to do it and to do it within just three to four months. Okay. Stella, back to you. Thank you, Adam. So taking in to consideration all of those requirements that Adam just mentioned, um, we realized we, we needed a solution that would give Bakersfield International flexibility, but as Adam said, it needed to be completed within very um, tight deadlines. So we didn't have the time to make each website, um, each member firm's website custom, but we still wanted to allow each member firm to have some customization between them, as Adam said, Big Two International wanted to maintain influence, not control of the member firms. Uh, so we decided that the best solution would be to run all 60 websites um, on one instance from which Big Two International would remain overall govern governance. Um, to do this, we developed the back end using Umbraco. Uh, the back end appears as one master website from the perspective of the CMS. The back end consists of an overall ed content editor, which organizes each member website, and um, which is mutually accessible with read only privileges for the member firms. Um, so what we essentially have here is multiple instances of Umbraco. Baker Tilly International have full influence of the back end, but member firms are able to go into their site and have access to things they require access to, allowing minor flexibility and personalization between the member firms websites. Uh, Baker Tilly International are now able to create a new website for their member firms in a matter of days using a template from the parent website, um, but just applying a new URL. 
Um, this has reduced the need for creating media assets um, because images, uh, news and documents can be shared between the member firm websites very easily. Uh, this setup ensures that while member firms can make minor edits to their websites, uh, share information and read the content of other member firms' websites, Baker Tilly International can make more executive decisions or modifications to member websites if they require it. And for the global directory, we needed a solution that could be controlled from one location um, that only Baker Tilly International themselves had right permissions to. So we set this up through Unbracket security settings. And for the uh, requirement of translations, we implemented Vorto so that users could translate, so that different member firms could um, allow mem users to translate the web, their language into their native language when using it, so that um, Baker Tilly International could continue to grow as a global brand. And on to you, Adam. Great, thanks, Stella. So the wins from the project really, uh, going back to some of those key things that we had to do. Uh, it was amazing that we were able to have 60 websites, now over 60 websites running on that single instance where we have the oversight and can provide that consistency and provide a base level to all of the to all of the firms. I think what was amazing is that we were able to get around 40, just over 40 sites ready in that four month period, ready for launch day. Um, so on top of everything all of the other firms had um, and have done themselves, you've got over 100 websites all changing on that big global launch day. Um, and frankly, we would have struggled to have got those other 40 in, in general across the line in that period of time. Um, with no disrespect to them, it's just the amount of the, the skill set they had and alike. Um, and even though they could have contracted with people, Again, that would have been a huge amount of effort coordinating 40 different firms to make sure that they had that. This gave us the opportunity to do it all in, in one go uh, with several late nights, but we 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 got there. So um, most importantly, there was that consistency um, in terms of brand across the firms, um, particularly as we, uh, we were really obviously pushing this extremely hard. And on those early days, we wanted to make sure that that was everywhere. And then that's continued in place since. Um, we've made sure that we have that consistency changes made can be replicated across the across the firms and um, to make sure that we don't have those um inconsistencies uh we are getting more firms uh signing up particularly as stella mentioned that only takes a couple of days that's very handy when we have new firms coming into the network and this is something we're able to offer straight away it is one thing that they're very keen to obviously to get right um, but secondly, with lots of other changes going on as they're coming into the network, um, it's another thing to be able to take off their plate um, and, and, and help them help them with it. So overall, um, I think this was a, a great win that we were able to do this in such a short period of time and then be able to expand things since then with more firms coming on board, rolling out additional tools and alike. Um, so we'll do more of that. So I think over to Stella, who can show you a little bit of what it what it looks like. Yes, of course. So here is what we helped design for Baker Tilly International. Um, here is a view, the middle picture is a view of the Baker Tilly International homepage, uh, which is generally consistent across all member firms so that they have uh, the blanket branding that Baker Tilly International were looking for. Uh, and member firms are able to make very minimal changes to this in its content, but generally they all tend to look like this. And then the other slides are images of the global directory that we implemented for them. Uh, so as you can see, there's a list of every country that contains member firms. And then within that, you can see in the third picture that um, you can see the individual firms within each country. And then if you were to click through on these links, um, you would see the contact information for those member firms listed here. And this content is exactly the same, no matter which member firm's website you are accessing the global directory from. So it's consistent, all the information across Baker Tilly. Um, and then I believe we are over to Adam to discuss things we would have improved. Yeah, I think there's a few things where if we'd have had more time, that's the that's probably the ultimate question or the, the, the main um, issue here is we got a heck of a lot done in a short period of time. And I think more than we expected to, if we'd have had a little bit longer, we could have put more into um, cross website content and sharing. We had a number of those things, say like the global directory, um, 
but to have done more in that regard in terms of news and things like that would have been fantastic to almost have the firms be able to cherry pick from a pool of information or a pool of knowledge, news, et cetera. Um, or us, or, or I say, or probably, or and, us to have the ability to push that out as well, because there's the firms that obviously that, that, that trust us and prefer us to manage out absolutely everything for us and they want their website to reflect global content and if we could have put that in place straight away i think that would have been a, a huge win probably some more templates and um, to give more options to the firms to make the build um, easier for us and um, to give us more flexibility um, in in what we could do and obviously we have added them over time but straight up that would have been a great option as well and then i think the big thing um and this is something, you know, frankly, we we could have done better. This isn't about the the, the platform or, or clerks war in any way, um, is more time spent getting those initial 40, but now 60 firms together to share ideas, share expertise, share knowledge, potentially co-fund and build future things. Um, and that is something that is coming about um, more recently. Um, particularly as we've had some larger firms being using this solution now um, and they've come in and they obviously have their development ideas and budgets and the like and it's really a, a question of saying well we're going to do this anyway why not pass it on to other people why not get back what they invest into the system um, and and I think do more of that so rather than centrally taking everything on um, yes there's things that we need to do but having not potentially all of the firms, but particularly maybe a leading coalition of firms who are keen to drive more developments to work on them together, potentially co-fund them or sponsor them themselves, but make them available to everybody else. And um, so I think that's a huge opportunity to add more here is, is getting those ideas direct from the firms who are interacting with their clients and their community through the sites, as opposed to us being one layer away. Um, so that's the that's the big one for me. Perfect. And um, from our side, there isn't a lot we would do differently just because when we built this solution, we built it on Umbraco 7. And so considering that we would do it the same way now if we were to do it again. But if we're going to do it on 8 or 9, we would do things quite differently um, because 8 or 9 are a whole different remit. And um, for instance, there are things like Vorto we wouldn't need to have used because Umbraco 8 was built with the concept of multilingual content within its core. So that would make things a lot easier. So if we were going to redo this project on 8 or 9, then we would do things differently. But otherwise, as things stand, um, we're very happy with the success of this project and would do it again. And then I will hand over to Adam to talk about future perspectives and what they want to do next. Yeah, I think so. so some of the things that we are looking at, a couple that are already underway, is we are migrating to Microsoft Azure hosting. Again, at the time when we originally um, moved over um, to the new the new system, uh, we had an existing provider who has been fantastic throughout, and um, they came up with a good proposition, and it made sense to do the move there. If we'd have had more time, we maybe could have looked into that even further. Um, particularly though, Microsoft Azure, we have a global agreement with Microsoft. We work very closely with them. Um, and then also more recently, Clerks will obviously are doing more and more work with Microsoft and Azure. So it made sense to centralize things under there. One, most importantly for the Azure experience. Um, two, frankly, the pricing is better. Uh, and three, because of that, that support and, and, and bringing everything under one roof there in, in some ways just makes it much, much more um, efficient. Also means that um, particularly with Azure, with uh, the content delivery network, um, we can, uh, you know, storing different cached versions um, of the contents of the websites in many different geographical locations is going to speed up that performance of our member firms, regardless of where they are in the world, which is, is fantastic. Um, looking to upgrade to later or newer versions of Braco is clearly something we want to look at and the additional functionality that's there. Of course, more websites means more consistency and, and more chance to help our firms and then 
hopefully what I mentioned previously is that kind of then that circle of it coming back in with more development ideas, um, which we would be very keen to do. Um, and then probably finally, something I mentioned earlier is, is more integrations to our other solutions. So that firm directory, that's great. That's it's working well. And that's for our external audience, let's say. Um, but internally, we have a couple of systems as well, whether that be our CRM or whether it be our internal intranet. Now, we shouldn't be not don't want to be. We just shouldn't be maintaining three sources of information there. So we are working on integrating the worldwide directory um, that's in Braco along with Dynamics 3. 365, um, which will then also flow through to our internal platform as well. So at the moment, something that's taking three people's time and potentially leading to inconsistencies or could lead to inconsistencies, um, we are bringing that under one roof be because of the, um, the options to integrate there. So it will save time, reduce risk and provide a better experience. So there's some of the, the top things we're looking to work on, which will uh, keep us busy for 2022. Perfect. So just to wrap up and conclude, uh, overall, we were really happy with the success of this project. Um, we really enjoyed working on it and it's still something that we are very proud of. Um, Baker Till International are one of our very valued clients and we really enjoy working with them. We've been with them for many years now and we intend to support them for the long term. Uh, the projects we've done with them have always been interesting and at the forefront of technology and we want to continue working with them in this way. Um, and if anyone else has got multiple members with disparate identities, the global CMS that we created for Baker Team International does have really good solutions and we'd be happy to talk about that with you. Um, and to wrap up on our side, I just want to say thanks very much to everyone who's joined today and we hope you found it interesting. And I just want to say a quick thank you to Adam from Baker Team for joining us and to Mike from Umbraco for joining and um, for hosting us. So thank you to you both. I also just want to thank you, um, both you, Stella and, and Adam, for, for taking the time to, uh, to show us this. I think it's extremely important for me personally. I can, I can, uh, I can look at a, a couple of benefits from this project that really stands out. And, and especially in this world that is ever changing and we need to be ready to, 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 to be agile and, and change from, from almost day, uh, day to day. It shows that you really um, got some of the things that a lot of companies strive for and that's uh, agility and, and and being able to uh, move fast and uh, just being able to spin up and, and you know basically take on a new firm and and, and offer them uh, to spin up a new site for them in, in a matter of a uh, very short uh, time to market it's very important and also um, the cost efficiency of it and the consistency in in terms of the branding so there's a lot of really good benefits of of, uh, of this project that um, that i really like so um and i am um, I look forward to seeing it uh, when it's uh, ready in Umbraco 9, um, then we'll, we'll do a new one. That's great. All right. Thank, thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure to speak to you and, and work with you over the, uh, over the years. And yes, Umbraco 9, that will keep us busy and uh, lots of exciting things there. So no, thank you. Thank you for the time. And, and thanks everyone for listening. Again, I'm very happy to talk to anybody, particularly if they're um, probably from a, a network franchise, that kind of model. Um, very happy to explain further how this is how this has worked for us. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone, and um, see you on the next webinar.